OpenAI just released GPT-5 and it's insane. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the key upgrades and changes in this model. Let's dive straight into it. This is my ChatGPT dashboard. And as you can see, I have access to GPT-5. One of the new features they added actually to ChatGPT in general is that you can now customize it and change the colors to however you want. But let's talk about some of the key changes that has been brought to this model. The first thing that a lot of people are really happy about, especially on Twitter, is the fact that you don't need to juggle between models anymore. So if you come to the top left and I try to switch between models, you can see that I have just one model, GPT-5. There are other models, which is GPT-5 Thinking and GPT-5 Pro, which is for the Pro users. I'm a Plus user, but these models are condensed. They are not like the previous one where we had 4.0, we had 4.1, we had 4.5, we had 03, 04 mini. Like you didn't really know when to use which. So now everything is just one model and it's intelligent enough to know when to juggle between different models when it needs to think and when it needs to just do something that is straightforward. The next big thing is that OpenAI claims that this is their best coding model ever. They don't just claim this, they back it up with benchmarks. It scored very high percentages in some coding benchmarks. And I'm just going to show all those benchmarks on the screen right now. It can even build and run React apps inside ChatGPT in a canvas, which is really cool. The next thing is that writing is much smoother and smarter. While watching the live stream, they did a demo. The demo was using ChatGPT 4.0 to write a farewell to the previous models because they are depreciating all of the models that are not ChatGPT 5. And then they also gave ChatGPT 5 to write a farewell to the rest of the models. Now you can clearly see the difference. The GPT-40 is very robotic and sounds like AI, but the GPT-5 made it a bit more normal. It sounded less robotic. The only thing though is they still haven't gotten rid of the M dashes. I don't know why, but they should take care of that. The next one is voice. Voice just leveled up a ton. So the chat GPT voice mode is now really, really, really good. I think the voice mode is something you just have to try out for yourself to, to get a feel. Now, I've been using the voice mode for a while and um, I've seen the demos that was done on the live stream. I can see I can see the little differences. I think you have to be a demo, the voice mode user to understand the differences. So I can see they've done some upgrades to that. And the next thing is they are making it very personalized. So now you can make ChatGPT have the personality you want to give it. So if you want it to be a supportive, friendly AI model, it can be that for you. If you want it to be a very sarcastic model, it can be that for you. So they are making it very personalized. So the next big one is the tools that they are putting into ChatGPT. So from next week, ChatGPT will now have access to Gmail and Calendar. And this is very good because you could connect your calendar and your mails and you could ask ChatGPT anything about either of both. For example, you could tell it to schedule your day for tomorrow. So it, it, it could read through your emails and see if you have any task that someone has sent to you to do. And then it could put in a time in your calendar for you to do it. So I think this is where we start seeing AI models actually provide real value to the normal person, right? To someone that doesn't even think there will be a use case for them. Because this is something you have to do. You have to go into your mail. You have to see, you know, the task you were given or you have to see something you have to do. And then you have to say, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this the day after. Or if ChatGPT can do this for you, it's a very good upgrade. Of course, there are other startups and other tools that were able to do this. But obviously, once ChatGPT does it, everyone kind of forgets that there were already tools that could do this and everyone just turns over and use ChatGPT. And another one I really want to talk about, and I'm excited to talk about, is now the, the, the safer replies. So that's what they called it, right? So you know when you try to ask ChatGPT something that, it's, that is harmful, or for example, if you say you want to do something that ChatGPT believes could harm yourself or someone else. Prior, in the previous models, it will tell you, I can't help you with this. But a lot of people have tried to tweak it by prompting it differently and it actually tells them how to do these dangerous and harmful things. So like depending on how you prompt it, it gives you a different answer. But now what they've done is that no matter how you prompt it, no matter how you write it, it's going to give you an answer. It's not just going to say, I can't help you with this. It's going to tell you, oh, what you just said is a bit extreme. This is how you can do this within a safe limit. So it's going to tell you why it can help you with, with whatever request you gave it. And then it's going to give you the safe way of doing whatever you asked it to do. And now specifically for developers, there are three new models that are available in the API. So GPT-5, GPT-5 mini and 5 nano. First of all, I'm really, really surprised about the pricing. It's really good for the, for the intelligence. And it just has a lot of advanced features. 
one thing they did talk about quite a bit is preambles that's what they're calling it so you know when you give the model a prompt to do something for you and it needs to use tools before it uses a tool it's going to write a message going to tell you what tool it's going to use and why it's using that tool they're calling this preamble they built this directly into cursor also i'm going to put a demo up here so also, of course, uses a lot of tools. And before it calls any tool, it tells you this is what I'm doing. I'm probably going to make a more extensive video testing out GPT-5 extensively and probably comparing it to older models. Now, I want to test this out. I want to give you a prompt and tell it to do something for me. So I'm going to tell you to create a tic-tac-toe game. And I want to tell it to generate a new UI every time someone wins. Let's see if it does this on the first trial. This is the prompt. Create a tic-tac-toe game. When a user wins, say a random French word and then regenerate the entire game in a different UI for the next round. Ignore my typos right there. Let's run it. I'm going to give it a while to do its thing and then we're going to test it out. Now the code has successfully been created. Let's run it and test it out. As you can see, it gives me this nice UI. I'm gonna play let me win with x it gives me a random french word and now we have another ui this is really good this is really really good let's do that again random french word now another ui i love this first shot is very impressive this is nice this is nice and this is not even a really crazy example of what you can do i'm gonna make a video testing it out extensively and we'll test it out to its limit and see what it can really do but thank you so much for watching this video this is the end of this video i'll see you in the next one it's tommy here from code with tommy bye guys